Zizila Baru, Eli Gabaina Makate, Obiani Nazazile Mama Nia Konaneza, Une Mama Nikate. Unless you help me to see, I cannot know you as you. Unless you help me to know, then I cannot be who you are. Unless you make me as you are, I cannot be as you are. Unless you help me to. Praise the Lord. Jesus, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless all of you. Praise the Lord. Can you hear me? Let me know if you can hear me. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you all. Jesus, take over. Take over. God bless you guys. Today is day two of our three days dry fasting for that which must die. How is everybody feeling right now? How are you feeling? Let us know how you're feeling. Today is the second day. We completed one day. Somebody said they are feeling light. Hallelujah. Somebody said they are feeling fine and strong. Somebody is feeling strong. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. A lot of people say they are feeling strong. What is it? I'm, I'm so strong. I pray now without ceasing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, what is it? They are happy. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you are not feeling too strong? How many of you feeling a little tired or weak? Tell the truth. Many of you are feeling a little tired. Maybe all the prayers. We've prayed four times already. And you're feeling a little tired and weak. Because you've not done this before. This is probably your first time. Just let us know. Tell the truth. No need to pretend. Tell the truth. Hallelujah. How many of you are, are doing this um, this um, fasting without food? You're really sticking to it. You're not eating. Like you've not eaten. If you've not eaten, just type me. Like if all you're doing is just water. Like you're sticking to it without food. And how many of you try to do it without food, but you've already eaten something? 
Let's tell the truth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As I came on the prayer line, somebody said they ate this evening. I huh, I knew it. As I came on the prayer line, God gave me a message to preach. I normally preach this during my fastings with you guys. But he said I should preach this because the devil has already started. The devil has already started uh, tempting a lot of you to break your fast or to do what you didn't plan to do. So I'm going to preach this. I'm going to preach this. I read from the book of Matthew chapter 4. If you've been fasting with me before, I've gone over this before, but I'll go over it again. Matthew chapter 4 from verse 1. He said, then was Jesus led, then was Jesus led up of the spirit. I hope you guys can hear me. I can't shout anymore because my, um, see, I see some people, they say they've eaten. Uh-huh. Somebody said, that's true. My mother told me to eat. I told her to stop tempting me. Uh-huh. I told you guys. Somebody said I ate yesterday. Somebody said I ate by six. Uh huh. Some of you did not plan to eat by six, but the devil told you to eat. And you fell for it. You ate. It is well. Okay, so from Matthew 4, verse 1, I'm reading King James. I will also translate in other translations. It says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness. To be tempted of the devil. He was led of the spirit into the wilderness. To be tempted of the devil. So that the devil could tempt him. And when he had fasted. Thank you Jesus. And when he had fasted 40 days. And 40 nights. He was afterward and hungered. How many of you here can do 40 days and 40 nights fasting? How many of you can fast for 40 days and 40 nights? Somebody say no. (laughs) What were you? It's just three days, right? But Jesus Christ did 40 days and 40 nights. I even heard Prophet T.B. Joshua has done that. I've heard some men of God have done that fast. And they're still alive. And you can see they are so anointed. How many of you can try it? Even some of you, six six to six for 40 days, if you can't do it, even though you eat at six, you still won't do it. Not a talk of no food for 40 days. Ha, ha, ha. You know, sometimes when you read the Bible, it kind of, just reading it alone gives you strength. You're like, wow. If Jesus could do 40 days, my God, I can survive these three days. I don't know how you think, but that's how I think. I'm like, well, Jesus did 40 days. I'm only doing three days. I'll be fine. Before you know, strength will just come in from nowhere. And I won't want to give up. So 40 days is like 37 days added to your three days that you are struggling with. To tell you that if you really mean to do 40 days and God is leading you to do it, you will survive. You'll be fine. Right? So we said, okay, good. I have turned off the music. I want it quiet. It says, it says, verse 2, And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, the tempter, the devil, he said, If thou be the Son of God, Command that these stones be made bread. When the tempter came, the devil, a lot of you, the tempter has already come to you. Yeah, the devil doesn't waste time. He's always coming. Even right now, as we are on this prayer line, the tempter is speaking to some of you, asking you, why are you even doing this? What's the point? Nobody will die. No witch will confess. What are you wasting your time? Some of you, it will tell you, you don't even have any witch in your family. What are you wasting time for? My friend, go and sleep. 
It's midnight. You are sleeping. The tempter, right? It says, and when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. If you are the son of God, why don't you ask these stones to be t- to turn to bread? You are here hungry, doing 40 days fast. If you say you are the son of God and you have the power to do things, just ask the stone to change to bread and eat. Yeah, the tempter, when he comes, he always comes with temptation of food. Like you'll be watching TV, suddenly they're showing a commercial of TV. Oh, that food, it looks good. Oh, why don't you just eat that food? Why don't you just go downstairs and just eat that? Nobody will know. Look at it now. Don't you want it? Look at that plantain chips. Look at that. It's always coming with with food. I'm sure as he's saying this, to command the stones to be made bread. Jesus is already picturing those stones looking like bread. Like he's looking at the stones, but the devil has already changed it to bread in his mind. Like he's seen big, big loaf of bread when he looks at the stone. For 40 days of no food, come on. Some of you will fall for it. Because the stone is already looking appetizing to you. Before you know, boom, you will do it. It says, it says command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written. Mommy, can you remove me from speaker, please? I can hear myself from there. Whatever noise is there, I don't like it. It's affecting me. Thank you, Jesus. I think it's a TV. I'm very sensitive to sound. Thank you, Mama. It says that when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Do you know how hard it would have been for Jesus? To resist this temptation, this temptation of food when he had not eaten for 40 days and 40 nights. It's not just so easy because we read it, oh, man shall not, no, 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 no. I'm sure the stones would have been calling him, eat me, eat me, me, me. You are hungry, eat me. You are hungry. You have already done 40 days. Eat me. God will understand. You will be fine. Eat me. Command me to turn to bread. First of all, that's not how God wants us to use the power that he gave us by changing things to food to just eat anyhow. You understand? If so, that means me, I will just go everywhere and be changing stone to to fufu and chips. You understand? Eat me, eat me, oh, eat me. Aren't you hungry? Come on now, why are you doing this? You have the power to change me to bread. Eat me, eat me, eat me. I am here. But he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. After the 6 p.m. prayer light, I was so tired. I even left you guys a little early, like 14 minutes early or something. And when I finished, all I was hearing was, go and eat something. You need strength. Don't kill yourself for these people. They don't even care. Go and eat. After all, you are anointed. What are you fasting for? The witches in your life, they will die anyway because you are anointed. Go eat. You still have a long way to go. I was hearing it clear. Clearly. Go and eat. And then before you know it, my son said he was hungry. And my son wanted to eat gari and soup, fufu, pan, um, Darian soup and the soup that we have yesterday I ate with my son before I started the fasting and that soup was so good my mom made some soup with goat meat and as how my son was saying he was hungry hey the soup eh, it just appeared in my face don't you want me remember how the goat meat tasted in your mouth yesterday eh? like I was laying on this couch here I was hearing everything 
eat something now. You can do six to six. Let them do the three days of dry. Let you do the six. After all, with everything you've given out, you need you need strength. You need to refill. You need all of that stuff. Mm. I ever asked my son, I said, Michael, do you have to eat fufu? Because we call everything fufu, yeah, right? I said, must you eat fufu? Why don't you eat something else? He said, no, he wants to eat fufu because he likes that soup. The soup, they immediately say that the devil is like, you see, the soup is so good. You like it. And we only have like um, three portions of the soup left, right? So the devil was like, you better eat the soup with him before he finish up. You know, if he eat one portion, only two portions will remain. And the way this your son is, you will finish it before your fasting ends. You don't understand, like... The soup is so good, we normally portion our soups in little, little containers. Everybody will just take a little one container. So after my son will eat, it will be two left. The devil said, hmm, only two left. By the time you break your fast on Sunday, Michael would have eaten the two. Are you sure you don't want to eat it? Even if your mother cooks another one, you know it will not taste like this one. My God. <laughs> and then before you know it, my stomach, my stomach started to make noise. Eat food, eat food, eat food. I know some of you go through stuff like this. Trust me. These things are real, man. People, they suffer these things. And all this while, I was still laying on the couch. First of all, I was so weak. I was so weak because I've given out so much. Sometimes when we, the anointing is so strong on us, we just feel like we are super, super people, super woman, I be superman. We keep going and going, and then suddenly it's like, wow, we are only human, right? <laughs> we now realize it. That's how I felt on the 6 p.m. prayer line. I was so tired. I couldn't even pray anymore. So I sat on the chair. I was just praying to God. I said, Father, help me, help me. I'm not going to eat. And I begged my mother, I said, Mommy, please, can you make some gari for Michael? Because there was no gari. I needed to make gari for him. And you know, sometimes when you're making the gari, the smell of the gari will say, hmm, this is fresh gari. Come on, eat it now. It's fresh. You know you like fresh gari. Try it. Just try a little bit. So I said, Mommy, please, can you make um, gari for Michael? She said, okay. So my mother went to make it for him. And me, I sat on here. I, I laid on here. I started listening to the audio I just did because sometimes I like to listen to the preaching because I don't really know what I say sometimes. I have to actually listen to to hear just like everybody else. And before you know it, I fell asleep. I slept and slept and slept. And when I woke up, it was 10 minutes to the fasting. So I got up, went to go wear my contacts. And God was saying, do you still feel hungry? I said, no. He said, good. He said, angels minister to me. That's why I'm no longer hungry or tired. Like, I'm not tired or hungry. The way I felt before sleeping was worse than the way I feel now. Now I feel good. I feel like I actually ate before sleeping. Somehow I just feel full. Even my stomach looks like it's full, like I've eaten something, but I've not. So some of you, Sometimes when these temptations, they come so strong, eh? if you can just resist this temptation, angels will minister to you. If you can just take maybe a nap, just take a nap. Let's say food is coming all the way. Food is tempting you, tempting you. Just close your eyes for a few minutes or for a few hours. By the time you wake up, you will just feel like you ate before you slept. I don't know if it works for you sometimes. That nap... When you wake up, you will feel so full. Eh? You will feel like you ate something before going to sleep. That, that temptation, you have overcome it. It's no longer like as strong as it was before you took that nap or before you slept. And so when I woke up, I was so energized. I felt so good. I felt like I had eaten. I said, ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank God I did not eat. Oh. This devil, he doesn't want that witch to die in my family. Sometimes it's the witch too. Eh? Them too, they are fighting. How do they fight you? By discouraging you from continuing your fast or by making you like see no reason why you are fasting or by tempting you through somebody. Like somebody told me she was fasting with us the last time and she went somewhere and that person tempted her so much to eat 
not knowing that that person too is an agent. They tempted her so much to eat and she ate. After she ate, she started feeling bad. And you know, that she did not know that person was an agent trying to make her not to stick with her fast, trying to make her not to complete the rules of the fast or something. So sometimes the devil's way of fighting back is by making you not to complete the fast. Is by making you not to join the prayer lines. Is by making you like just making you sleep off or making you sin while you are fasting. Maybe he will send somebody to tempt you. Maybe you will fornicate during the days of the fasting or you will do something that you are not supposed to do while you are fasting. And that's his way of making you break your fast. That's his way of defeating you. But see, when we read the scriptures, we see that Jesus Christ passed the first test. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Meaning, there is time for everything, really. There is time when you will eat and eat and eat. There is time when you will fast and just spend time with God. Even when Jesus had his disciples, people were complaining that how come you and your disciples don't fast like the disciples of John and all of that. He said they will fast when the time comes because Jesus has already done all the fasting. He's fasted a lot. These people, they only see Jesus as someone that likes to eat, but they don't know that this Jesus had fasted for 40 days. Eh? He had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. I'm sure he did even more fast than that than John the Baptist did. There is time. This is time for you to fast. It's time for you to let go of food. You've had food in front of you for a whole week after the last fast. You will still have food in front of you for a long time after Sunday. You will see food and you will say, I don't even want to eat again. I'm tired. So don't let that food tempt you to break this fast. Because that's what the devil is using to defeat you. There will always be food. There will always be food. There will always be food. Do you understand? Food is not running away. There will always be McDonald's. There will always be all these restaurants that you like. There will always be commercials on TV showing big shrimp, big steak, and all that. I remember when I was in the world, when I still was a party girl, I was um, running a lounge called Phase 2 Lounge, and... At some point, I fired all the cooks that I hired because I didn't like the way they were cooking. I know how to cook very well, but I don't like to do it. I decided to just cook on my own in the lounge. And we were not that busy anyway. So so I'll be the one to cook the goat meat pepper soup, the fish pepper soup, the jollof fries, the white rice, the soups, everything, stew, soup, everything, even the suya. I'm the one that just makes everything. But people did not know that it was me. They thought that I had cooks, but it was me. And during that period, I was gaining weight and I I wanted to lose a lot of weight because I even started feeling a certain way. I, I could feel heavy in my body and stuff. So I decided to do juicing. I told myself, even my mother knows about it. I told myself I want to do juicing. And I now announce it on Facebook that I'm going to juice. It's going to be... um. I think weight loss challenge that I'm just going to drink only juice for as many days as I can until I, lo- I lose all this weight. I announced it on Facebook because me, when I announce something, sometimes people think I'm joking, but mm, I can be very determined. And then guess what I was doing? My son, Michael, will even help me hold the camera. He was so young then. I think this was like maybe five or six, five years ago. Or six years ago, five years ago, or six years ago, Michael was like five, I think, five. So Michael will help me hold my phone and video me. He will record me. He will record me every single day. I will come on the video. I'll say, hi, this is Princess Belemzi, and today is day one of my weight loss challenge. Yay. And then before you know, I have a, uh, what's it called, a, a machine to weigh myself. And these videos are on YouTube. Just type my name on YouTube. You will see them. I think there are almost 140 videos. I was consistent. Hi. 
<laughs> I videoed myself the daily, daily, daily weighing myself. I stood the first day I told them my original weight. Every day they will see my weight change. Every day you could see me looking smaller and on the scale. Oh, today I have lost five pounds. Today is day four and I've lost five pounds. Hey, yeah. This is the juice that I'm drinking. I've not eaten. I'm only drinking this juice. I did it steadily for 60 days. I had no food, just the green juice. <laughs> and every day of those 60 days, I was cooking in that lounge every single day. Then I didn't even have Jesus. I didn't even believe in fasting. I didn't know all of that stuff. All I knew was I wanted to lose weight. And because I had announced it to the world that I'm going to be drinking juice only and I will video myself daily, I could not eat because I will stand on the scale in the video and everybody was looking to see what the scale would say. And I can't cheat the skill, you know? So I kept to it. For the first 60 days, I did not eat anything. All I had was juice and water. If you go on um, on YouTube, God told me not to delete all those pictures and videos. So they're still there. You will see me every day. Hi, this is Princess Belemzi. Today is day 10 of my weight loss challenge. Yay. I have lost it. Let me see what, how much I've lost. I carry the skill. Michael is holding the camera. I will stand on it. Oh my God. I've lost 15 pounds. Yay. Yay. You know, like I did this for 100 and I think 40 days. And I was so determined. And it's not like I was praying to God or I was filled with the Holy Ghost, but I was so determined. And it was just for weight loss. It's not because I wanted to seek the face of God or because I wanted to be anointed or none of that. It was just for weight loss, weight that will always come back again. See, weight that maybe after two months, your weight will start coming back. If you start eating, what is two months, two weeks or one week, <laughs> you know, weight comes back so fast. But I was determined and every day I will cook in that lounge. The first three days of this challenge was so, 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 so hard. Oh my God. I remember the first day or two or second day, my best friend then, Nena, she came with her, her man, um, and they came to order some French fries and some chicken wings. And they came to chill in the lounge. And when I was frying that um, fries for them and the wings, all I could hear was just taste one fry. Taste one wing. You understand? Nobody will know online. Your weight will still be the same. When you stand on the skill, it will still be. Or you can even cheat on the skill. You know, there's a way you can manipulate the skill. I don't even know how that way is possible. But when I was doing that thing, it was so hard. When I even brought the food to them, my friend was like, ah, Belemzi, you sure you don't want to eat? Eat before you die, yo. Hey, eat though. You cannot be cooking in this kind of place. And you are expecting to be doing this thing every day. People, they don't care about you. What if you pass out? Temptation. The first three days was so hard. But I was consistent and persistent and determined to do this because I had put myself out there. See, I'm talking about something that was just about my weight, not about God. And I did it. Oh, I did it. Go watch the videos. Sorry, you will see that I'm wearing mini skirts and opening my, you know, my cleavage and all that. That was then before I repented. But the fact is I was consistent. Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, up till day 120 or 30 or 40. Consistent. I didn't miss any day. Some days I was feeling so sick because I was weak, no food in my body. I still came on and did a video. I was very consistent. So this consistency you see on, on here that I'm always keeping to these things, doing these things, it didn't start now. I've always been a very persistent person. But I'm thinking, I'm like, if I could, if I could do this when I was in the world, when I was not even knowing God like that, and I could keep to it, why can't I do this now? 
Why can't I, why can't I fast? You understand? Why? I've done 140 something days. After the first 60 days, then I started eating in the evening. I would juice morning and afternoon. Then in the evening, I would eat for the rest of the, I think it's 60 days. But the first set of 60 days, there was no food in my system. Just juice. It cleansed me out. Even the small sickness I was feeling before I started was done with. I look skinnier. I lost so much weight. I, I look so skinny. The more I saw the result, the more encouraged I was to do it. Before you know it, one pants that I couldn't fit in, I will wait maybe after two weeks of the, doing the thing, the pants will fit. I will be so happy. I'm like, yay. I was seeing results and I just kept on pushing and pushing and pushing. A lot of people on Facebook, Princess in Tube, a lot of people that were following me then, they started to do juicing. They say, ah, Princess, we want to join you to do this challenge. None of them could do it. Oh my God. <laughs> Nobody could do it. They say, I don't know how you do this. This is not easy. It made me so hungry. At some point, they were even begging me to make juice. They would buy it because I had a friend that was doing it. But because I was consistently doing it, my money was finishing buying juice. So I said, let me start doing it myself. People will send me money. Please. Can you do for me? I want to do, maybe your own is the one that works better. The one I do at home is not working. I want to order from you. They couldn't do it. They will send me a message. I don't know how you do it. Man, two days and I got so hungry. The juice makes me so hungry. Man, you are so strong. You are strong. You are, wow, you are so determined. They couldn't do it. Oh, I wish I could see some of those old posts from then so I can share them. People could not do it. And the more they couldn't do it, the more they respected me because they couldn't understand how I could be so persistent. Despite the fact that I'm in a lounge where there's food involved, not knowing that I am the one that even cooked the food daily. I have to taste the food. When I taste it, I don't let it pass my throat. I rinse my mouth with water and I spit it out. I did this for so long. And then now that I'm in Christ, I'm like, so if I can do that in the world just because I want to lose weight, why can't I do this now? It's just three days. Why not? Why can't I do this? Some of you, when you were in the world, remember this. When you were still trying to diet, you have done some crazy things just to lose weight. Yeah, some of you ladies think. You have gone without food for days, starving yourself so your belly will look flat so you can go to that party. You have done some crazy things. Oh my God. That whole weekend, you didn't eat. You didn't drink. You just wanted to have this flat shape because maybe you have this outfit you want to wear and you don't want your belly to be bulging out. You know, like you've done, you almost passed out once. Yeah, because you didn't want to eat. You could do that. You were determined. You are like, no, let this weekend pass it. Ah, me, I cannot eat this weekend. Ah, no, 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 me, I have to. Or maybe you are going for bikini things. You know how people go for like swimming or maybe you're traveling to a place where you and your friends will be swimming in the pool and you don't want your stomach to be bulging. And that whole weekend, maybe you don't eat or you do one kind of diet that you cannot eat. You've done all this stuff and you kept to it. Like you, 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 you were very good just because... You wanted people to see you so shapey. But now when it comes to fasting and the things of God, it's so easy for people to quit. It's so easy for people to say, I can't do it. No, no, no. Ah, I will die if I do it. They don't even try. So people don't even try to put in any effort. I'm telling you, they just feel like, oh, no, no, I can't. I can't. I can't. Who told you you can't? You can do all things if you really want to. And Jesus will strengthen you to do it. Don't say you can't, but when you were in the world, you've done so many things. As I'm even saying this, some of you are feeling strengthened because you're thinking of some of the things you did when you were, when you were still in the world. So you're thinking of how you went away from eating for days or how you, you only drank water or something. Yeah, and you were fine. You were fine. You were fine. You were fine. You have done all the diets. There's some women here. There's no diet in this world that they have not done. Hey, 
Is it um Jenny Craig? What's it called? Is it um um seafood diet? Some of you, your diet is to seafood. Anytime you eat, you see food, you get hungry and you eat diet. Some of you, you've done um um uh, what's the name of this thing? Oh, that pastor's wife is doing um keto. I be keto. Some of you, you've done um. Oh my God, there's so many diets out there, man. There's so many diets out there. You've even done um. What's the name of this one? Lemon. Oh, I did that lemon lemonade diet. Can somebody remind me of some of those diets? Some of you women, you know what I'm saying now. That lemonade diet where you drink lemon and cayenne pepper. And uh, what would I put in, in that thing? It was lemon, cayenne pepper, and one syrup like that. Chai, I have done things, so my dear. <laughs> I would drink that lemon. And they say Beyonce did that diet. She lost a lot of weight. I said, okay, let me follow Beyonce and do this thing. I will be mixing lemon and cayenne pepper. And, um, and one syrup like that, maple syrup, not, not the one for pancake. Another kind of syrup you go to like, um, whole food store and you go and buy those. My God, that's in eh? <laughs> And then you will do the salt water in the morning. You fill up a cup of water, a big jar of water. You put salt, sand, sea salt or something. You drink. I, we have done things. For days, we would just be drinking the lemon and the this thing. And uh, yeah, we do lose weight. But guess what? When we start to eat, it all comes back. Yeah. For me, it always comes back. I used to even do one called the Hollywood 48 hour miracle diet. In fact, I was Walmart's best customer. I was skinny then, but I would say, let me do it in two days. I will lose 10 pounds. It says lose 10 pounds in 48 hours. They still sell it in the stores. I will go and buy that thing. It's like orange juice. You mix it to water. You sip, sip. I will make sure in my house, that time I was living alone, I will clear all the food in my apartment. Eh? Only thing I will have is water. No cereal, no nothing. So if I'm home, I'm hungry. I open the pantry, no food, good. I will just drink water and sip the juice. Kai, 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 kai. We don't do a lot of stuff. All because we wanted to have the shape. We wanted to look so good. Somebody say boiled eggs diet. What kind of diet is that? <laughs> I've never heard of boiled egg diet before. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> they say boiled eggs diet. <laughs> that one not be diet though. <laughs> I will just eat all the egg in my house. What kind of diet is that? Have you guys heard of boiled egg diet? I'm seeing that on the prayer line. <laughs> what? Boiled egg. That one you'll be farting and your mess, eh? your fart will be smelling of egg, egg, egg. They say all you eat is boiled eggs. Really? How come nobody told me about that diet when I was dieting? Man, I would have finished a whole case of egg. <laughs> I did not even know they had that kind of diet. Nobody told me about that. But are you seeing different, different kind of diet? And women were very, 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 very serious about it. But now we are doing Holy Spirit diet, which is our fasting. And some of you can't even do it. But you've done so many things in the past. But the devil is tempting you so much this, this time. You can't even stay without food for even one day, two days, three days. Think of all the diets you've done. All the fast you've done that was just for, 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 for worldly achievement. For, for people to see how you look skinny and all. People don't even really care. Sometimes the skinny thing is in our mind. We're not even skinny. We're still looking the same, but in our mind we have lost weight. He said after he tried him for that first temptation, it didn't work. The devil taken him up into the holy city and set him onto a pinnacle of the temple. The devil doesn't give up. He saw that Jesus Christ did not fall for that food diet. So he took him up to the holy city and set him up on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of God, you see how the devil is. He said, if thou be the son of God, if you are the son of God, just sounding, just the way he sounds is even not right. If you, if you, if you, if you are the son of God, like you claim to be, if thou be the son of God, cast yourself down. Cast thyself down, throw yourself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up. If you are the son of God like you claim, just jump, 
Throw yourself down. It is written now. Uh -huh. God will give his angels charge concerning thee. God will give his angels. He will give angels to you to protect you. And in their hands they shall bear thee up. Meaning they will not let you fall. Lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. They will not even let you hit your foot on a stone. Just cast yourself down. Jump. Drop yourself. God loves you so much. He got angels all around you. They will catch you even before you land on the floor. Mm. He tried one. It didn't work. He tried this one. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. The little strength that Jesus had from 40 days of no food, no nothing. He was still able to resist this. He said, it is written. We must not tempt the Lord our God. Do you notice that this second temptation, the devil quoted a scripture? He told him, he quoted Psalm 91. He told him that if you are the son of God, jump down. God has given angels charge concerning thee. He has sent angels to surround you like everybody have angels. Even you, you have your own angels that God has sent to protect you. And they are not supposed to allow you hurt yourself. You understand what I mean? They are not supposed to allow you get hurt. So why don't you take advantage of these angels that you have? And Jesus had to quote a scripture. He said, it is written, you must not tempt the Lord thy God. Meaning the devil also knows how to quote scriptures. So it's not every time you hear scripture, you're like, oh, God is speaking. Oh, God wants me to eat and break my fast now. I can eat now. Hey, thank God you entered the kitchen and you eat. But in what context was this scripture used? Because the devil knows how to twist the scripture. Some of you, the moment you hear a scripture, you automatically assume that it was the Holy Spirit that spoke to you. I'm just telling you now that the devil just quoted the scripture. Yeah, Psalm 91. Verse 11, right? He quoted the scripture. So some of you, after hearing that scripture, you're like, oh, God has spoken. God has spoken. Let me do it. No, you have to be able to discern who is quoting the scripture. Is this the Holy Spirit or is this the devil? Because some of you, all you need is to hear scripture. Once you hear scripture, it is done. God has spoken. No, the devil can quote scriptures too. And the way he will use it to twist it, to favor you at that time, to, f to make you hear what you want to hear at that time. He can use the scripture to manipulate you. And if you're someone that just want to hear scripture, you will fall for it. But Jesus knew that that was not the Holy Spirit speaking to him. He knew that that was not God speaking to him. He, he, he fired back with another scripture. He said, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Meaning God did not give me power for me to be falling anyhow, for me to be tempting him. Lord, will you catch me? Like some of you now, you go on a high place. You see, it's dangerous. You're like, well, God says he loves me. I'm going to be a powerful woman of God. Nobody can kill me. No man can stop me. Ha, <laughs> ha. I will be powerful. No body born of human can kill me. Nothing can stop me. I have seen myself in stadiums. I have seen myself open big, big churches. Let me just jump. I know that I will not die. My dear, try that thing and see. <laughs> you will find yourself in hellfire the way you will die. Eh? <laughs> Some people are always like that. They will say, oh yeah, with all the prophecies that they prophesy like, on my life, there's no way I can. No, let me just do it. Nothing will happen. God loves me so much. God has shown me dreams of me doing this and doing that. I have not done that. So let me just jump. Don't try it. Oh. Do not try it. Even if you don't die, you may be paralyzed. Maybe in the stadium, you didn't look very well in that dream you had. You came there paralyzed. You will be sitting on a wheelchair preaching to people. <laughs> you will be wondering, Father, what did I see? But I saw myself standing and preaching in the stadium. You did? Okay, now you ain't standing no more. <laughs> Don't try that thing. Trying to put God to test, to try him, to see if the angels will really catch you. God did not do that. Oh. See, angels will just stand there and watch you like that. You will not deliberately do something and expect the angels to, to help you. No, 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 no. It's when something happens by accident. That's when they will help you. I remember one day I was um going through the back door of the kitchen. 
I wanted to throw trash outside. Once I opened the back door and I closed the door, my finger got stuck in the door. And I screamed. I say, ah, like the door closed my finger. I screamed. I don't even know how that happened. That was an accident. I shouted. And I was so angry. I said, Lord, why did my angels not protect me? Why did this door hit my finger? Why? Why? I was shouting this. I think I've told this and um, people that listened to me this story before. This was like in 2016 or 17. I was like, and God said, check the finger. Do you feel any pain? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. My God. He said, check the finger. Do you feel any pain, my dear? Immediately, I looked at my finger. I pressed it. It's like nothing happened to it. Do you know what it means for a door to close on your finger? By now, it should be red. That place, there should be blood on that finger or something. I pressed this finger hard. There was no pain. Hey, my God. He said, check the finger. Do you feel any pain? Oh, yeah, yeah. Has anyone closed a door or a door has mistakenly closed on your finger before? Then you will know what I'm talking about. I pressed my finger. I was, no pain. No pain. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. My God. I could not believe it. I said, no pain, Lord. He said, yes. Because your angels protected you. I say, oh my God. In fact, that thing should have broken my finger. No pain. That's what it means when he said he will give his angels charge concerning you. They will help you. They will protect you. So sometimes you may fall. The kind of fall that people would think you will break your head or that you'll hurt yourself. You get off from that fall. No pain. No breaking head. No bleeding. Angels were there to help you. You may be mad. Why did I fall? My dear, the fall could have landed you in hospital. But you woke up with no scratch. You all like an accident. You were involved in an accident. You came out of that vehicle with no scratch. Even the people that came to rescue you, they are surprised. They are wondering, how did this one come out with no pain, no scratch? Yeah. Because of angels, God sent angels to protect you. So even though that accident was meant to kill you, to destroy something in your body, you walked away without any scratch, any pain. That's right. Because it was an accident. It was not something that was intentional. Check yourself. There are times that some things happen that you thought you would have gotten injured badly or you would have like being in pain or something and you don't feel anything. Your angels were at work. I'm telling you because it happened in a way that you didn't even expect, but God made sure he made that painless, no pain, no cuts, no bleeding, no nothing. And until today you can't understand it. That's right. That's what it means by giving his angels charge over you. That's right. So they will watch over you. They will protect you. So sometimes you would, you would fall. But in that fall, the devil wanted you to break your head or bl blood should be coming out from your eye or something. Or you, But you woke up from that fall without a scratch. The angels held you. So even though you look like you fell on the floor, you really didn't land on the floor. Like when I fell in, what's it called? In Philadelphia, when I was preaching, when the power of God came on me so strong, Janelle, my girl was doing video. And suddenly when she saw me coming down, she fell down so I could fall on her. Till today, I still tell them that when I landed on that floor, I did not feel like I landed on the floor. I felt like I floated. It's like I landed on the air. I had no pain. What I didn't even feel like I landed on somebody's body because God knew that that fall was not me falling. That was the Holy Spirit taking over me. I didn't even feel somebody's body. I felt like I, I floated. 
I didn't, I didn't feel. That's why sometimes you see some people, eh, they fall under the power. They probably hit their head. They get up and you're like, how is your head? They're like, I'm fine. I don't feel anything. Because to your, in your eyes, they probably fell on the floor. But no, an angel was really holding them when they fell. <laughs> Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. In your eyes, this person knocked their head somewhere on that. F- but no, in reality, there was an angel that held them. But you can't see that. That's why you tell them, how is your head? Oh, I don't feel anything. Are you sure? I don't feel anything. I'm fine. You're like, what? We saw you hit your head hard on this thing. But I don't feel anything. Because an angel held them up. So even in your eyes, even though you see him hit his head, it really didn't happen like that. There was an angel that held him. So he really didn't hit his head. And even if he hit his head, an angel came and massaged that area and took away every impact, the pain and all of that. That's right. That's right. He said, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. If I fall by accident, angels will catch me. But if I purposely do it, expecting God to save me, now that's going beyond what God wants us to do. That's tempting God, and I'm not going to do that, you devil, out of here. The first temptation, he passed it. He didn't change the stones to bread. And what do you think the first temptation looked like? You think the devil came and stood in front of him and said, um, um, do this, do that. No, it was in his mind. He was just seeing stones looking like food. It's just like you in your mind, you're upstairs and the devil is saying, come downstairs. Your roommate is cooking. Come downstairs. There's food in the fridge. He's talking to you. Come down. He's even giving you picture. You're seeing visions of food. The devil is right there with you. You're not seeing him, but he's tempting you right there. That's why you're imagining these things. Eat, the woman of God won't know. Eat today and you can do your own three days. You can add one extra day to your fast. Yes, eat today, don't worry. Instead of breaking yours on Sunday, you can break on Monday, don't worry. He's even giving you suggestions on what to do. And it's the same devil that once you do it, he will blame you, look at you. You can't even fast. You ate. Hi, I told you you can't do this thing. You cannot do it. Other people are here fasting you. You've gone to eat. Foolish girl. He's the one that tempted you. He's the one that will insult you, accuse you, condemn you and everything. This devil is a bastard. That's right. He will curse you out after tempting you. After doing all that, he will not insult you. You are so weak. Why do you like food like that? You can't even stay one day without food. Every time you must eat. Look at your stomach so big. Look at how fat you look. Look at you. Eh, eh, you can't even do this. I always knew you can't do it. I told you you can't fast. You cannot fast. No, you cannot fast. That voice will start to accuse you. You will start feeling depressed. You will start feeling mad. He's wicked. So when you think of things like this, you're like, you know what? You bastard, get out of here. Get out. Get out. And you will be strengthened. So now guess what happened? After Jesus told him, he said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. It is written. That's why some of you, you need to know scripture. So when the devil comes tempting, you have a scripture to fire back at him. Yes. You think you're the only one that knows the Bible, you devil. <laughs> oh yeah, take this. <laughs> you know, back and forth. You're giving scriptures back. And then he says, again, again, this devil doesn't give up. Again. Already number three, oh, the devil taken him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdom of the world and the glory of them. He took him to a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Hey, thank God that Jesus was not a materialistic person. If Jesus was someone that cared so much about wealth or money, and there's, oh my God, some of you, the reason why you break your fast is money. Somebody suddenly, maybe somebody you used to fornicate with, that used to help you pay your bills that you have not heard from a while. Now that you start fasting, suddenly the guy is calling you and you need like 1,000 ASAP or maybe 2,000 for your rent and stuff. You need it desperately. He will call you and he will say, come now for all time's sake. For old time's sake, 
I know you don't have rent. I know you're still not working. Come on now, I'll give you $2,000. Just come and sleep with me. I'll give you that money. In fact, I will send it to you now if you say you are coming. I would. Do... And this is somebody that has given you money in the past for these reasons. So it's like, yeah, this man always gives me when he says he will give me. You will start thinking, Chai, if I don't take this, how will I pay my bill or my children? I don't want us to be homeless. So, Chai, oh, it's true. I really need this money. Oh. Hey, this woman of God, she doesn't even give somebody money. Every time speaking tongue, if I ask her now, can she help me? You say, hey, I'm a woman of God. Why are you asking me for money? Hmm? Hmm? Let, me just, let me just do this thing one time, this last time, this last time. Hey, I really need this money. Maybe your child is not even feeling well. I could take some of this money to buy them medicine. God will understand. You know, maybe it's God that even sent this man to call me safe. Hey, some of you will even say maybe it's God that is sending this person to lead you to sin. Some of you have talked like that too. You say, who knows? Maybe it's God that told him to come. If not, how did he know that I need money for rent? How? Hmm. The devil taketh him up into an eye exceeding mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. He used the lust of the eyes to, sh to try him. Look at these beautiful kingdoms. See how they look. Don't you want this? Don't you want this? Come on, I know you want this. <laughs> you must want this. There's no way you won't want this. <laughs> I, $10,000. Do you know what 10000 can do for you? $100,000. Do you know what you can use? You can use it to buy a house, a car. Hey, come on, take it, take it. Take it. It will bring so many things in your head that you can do with it. Yes, you can use it for this. You can use it for this. You will be debt free. All these debt collectors will not call you again. And you will still be following this woman of God. You know, just take it. The lust of the eyes. When you love the things of the world, you will easily fall for this one. He says, Again, the devil take him up into an high exceeding mountain and showed him all the kingdom of the world and the glory, the glory of them. How beautiful they look. The glory of them. Hey, hey, let me read that in another translation. My God. ERV says, then the devil led Jesus to the top of a high, a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all the wonderful things in them. The flashy things, yes, the things that he thought Jesus would like. The beautiful things in them. The devil likes to show you the beautiful, the outside of it. He doesn't show you what's inside of it. Some of you, you see a man is so cute. He's so cute. You see the outside cuteness and all. But you don't know what's inside of that man. The devil will show you the outside of it. The flashiness of it. Oh, it's so flashy. Oh my God, I want this. <laughs> you don't know that there's so much pain inside of it. There's so much evil inside of it. But at that time, your eyes is only beholding the, 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 the good things, the flashy one. You're not even thinking. You're not thinking. Hmm. And as you say, for the first, for the third test, the devil took him to a peak of a huge mountain. He gestured expansively, pointing out all the earth's kingdom. How glorious they are, they all were. How glorious, like how beautiful, how he will, he will color it the way that you would definitely like it. If you're someone that you're so carried away with material stuff, you are so, you, you like all these material things. It will make sure they look attractive to you. Don't you want this? I know you want this. You can have this. All you have to do. Is worship me. He said, and say it unto him, all these things I will give thee. All these things will I give you. If thou will fall down and worship me, I will give you all. Don't you see how beautiful it is? Don't you see this money? This is a lot of money. Don't you want it? Just say yes and I will give it to you. 
But you just need to bow to me. You just need to sin. You just need to do this for me. <laughs> just sin. Bow. Sleep with him. Yes. Just bow to me. Tell me, yes, I am your God. Yes, just bow one time. Just one time. That's how they, they lure. Holy Spirit, I love you so much. He's telling me, he said, this is how the devil lure people to become false prophets. Oh, I love the Holy Spirit. He said, this is what the devil does to lure people that are now servants of the devil. Some of these false prophets you see, the devil did not tell them some of the things that they are encountering now. He did not tell them they will sacrifice somebody in their church every month. He did not tell them they will kill their children or their wife. He did not tell them they will be sleeping with virgins. He was just showing them all the things that he could do for them. If they come and worship him, he will give them power. He will make them see things. He will make people love them. He will give them money. He will give them fame. He has to use all that to lure them into doing these things. But he didn't tell them the truth of all that they will go through. So this man fell for it. They're like, wow, all I'm hearing is good stuff. All I'm seeing is good, good things. Ha, ah, what is so bad about this? It can't be that bad. It cannot be that bad. No, it can't be that bad. I will be famous. My church will be filled with people. I will have power. I will be able to see into people's life. I will prophesy. People will call me father. People, ah, this sounds like good, 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 good all the way. But the devil is tricky. He did not tell you all the other sorrows that will come with it. The monthly commitment. The weekly commitment. The you worshipping him every night. The, the woman that will be coming to sleep with you in your dream every day. He didn't tell you all that. He left that for later. With God, God will tell you everything. Yeah. That's right. Jesus told us. That yes. In this world, there will be a lot of tribulation. Yeah. But he said, don't worry. We'll have peace in him. He has overcome the world. Jesus tells us ahead of time. In this world, you will have trouble. Oh. I'm not telling you that there will be no more trouble. Eh? You will, but don't worry. I have overcome the world. In this world, there will be so many afflictions. So you that is righteous, the devil will afflict you with a lot of things. But don't worry. I will always deliver you. See, Jesus doesn't lie to us. He tells us the truth. He tells it to us so we know what to expect. People will hate you because you are my followers. People will persecute you. People will even kill you because you are my... He tells them these things. So they can make up their mind and follow him. He does not deceive them by showing them only flashy things. No. But the devil keeps that other part. So that you will say yes and then he will trap you. You say, I did not know. There was one Nigerian movie that I keep telling you guys about. I don't know if some of you remember. There was this guy that he has lost all his family members. All he had is his mother. And him and his mother are so close. Yeah. I watched this years ago. His mother and him are so close. He loves his mother. That's all he had. One of his friends saw how he was suffering. The guy said, man, the suffering is too much. What kind of life is it? And he was asking how is his friend so rich and all. His friend said, if I take you to, I can take you to a place or whatever. He took him to this cult that he belongs. And in the cult, they told him that, ah, that they can give him money. He will be one of the big men in town and all of that stuff. But he will have to sacrifice his mother. The boy did not want to do it. Before you know, he considered it and he did it. So the only person that he has in his life, his mom, he killed his mama to get money. And when the evil money started coming, he got a house and everything. And of course, most of the time, this money, all you're using it for is, is drinking, clubbing, sleeping around. So there was always girls around him. He was always having sex. But guess what? He started to see the ghost of his mom. He was hunted in his house. He couldn't sleep. His mother will appear everywhere he goes. He will see his mother. So he had money, but he couldn't enjoy it. Evil money. 
He was always running away from the ghost. Even at night, people would be with him. He would be shouting. He's, oh, he's the only one I've seen her. Suddenly, he went back to the court and he told them, he said, what kind of life is this? You say you will give me money. I have killed my mother, the only one I love. And now I can't even enjoy this money. In my own house, I can't even sit down. I'm always running around because my mother's ghost is haunting me. Let me tell you, eh? that ghost that was haunting him, his mother is already dead and gone. Maybe she's in he heaven or well, only God knows where she went. That was a familiar spirit from the same devil that said he will help this man that is tormenting him. Yeah, <laughs> because the devil doesn't want you to enjoy anything. He wants to keep tormenting you. That was a demon coming in form of the mother to torment him. The devil hates humans. He hates people. You think he will give you something for you to enjoy? Why? How come? You can never enjoy anything. He must torment you. He wants you to always be suffering, crying. Always come to him for help. He wants you to be miserable. He hates you so much. So he went back and he said, and he will have a way. The devil has a way of making you come back home. Hmm. Let me tell you what happened when you go to the voodoo priest. I'm going to talk about this movie still long. This time God want me to preach this particular time. So I'm preaching. And see, when you go to the voodoo priest, and you say, oh my God, I can't sleep at night. These demons, they are tormenting me. I can't sleep at night. Please help me. The voodoo priest will now consult the, the demons and say, hey, this is what I want you to do. Please allow her to sleep for like one week or two weeks so that she will believe that what I did work. But don't worry, after two months or one week, you can we can afflict her with another thing so she will be back. But you have to allow her sleep. If not, she will not come back. She will not know that what I did worked. You know, we have to get her so she can also bring other people. So they'll tell you, don't worry, go, go, go. So you will sleep well for two months. Hey, this thing worked. Oh, woman of God prayed for me. It didn't work. Everybody prayed. It didn't work. But I went to this voodoo priest. Look at me. I can sleep. Two months later. Boom. Another thing has come. You will run to him again. Hey, oh, yes, so oh, please help me. The same way that thing happened. Can you do this one for me? They will make you a, in a way that you will keep running to them. And those demons will still come back or the ones that made you not to sleep. They only took a break because the voodoo priest told them to just allow you small so that it will be like it work. What they did work. If not, you will not come back. They are not really helping you in any way. They are adding more demons. And one day, all of them will take over. That's why whenever you visit that place, if you had only two demons, you are coming back with ten demons. Some of them may be quiet for some days, making you feel like all is well. <laughs> but not, all is not well, though. They are just... <laughs> These demons, they are very smart. You don't know. <laughs> they are very smart. That's why some people think, oh, when they go there, they are getting help. They are not getting any help. That demon is still there. Plus, they've added another one that will start in two weeks. So that you will come back to them. They want you to keep coming back. Oh, you think you're going to... <laughs> some of them, they have covenant. They will tell you, eh, we'll do this for you. But every six months, you have to come here to renew it. Every two months, you have to come here to renew it. Hey, with God, we don't have to renew anything every month. No, 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 no. You have to come to renew it. Some, some of people, they travel to America, but every, every year, they, are, they must go to Nigeria because they have some covenant that they have to renew. They have some things. You will not know why they are always traveling. They are going to renew things because they know that if they don't renew it, the devil will kill them or somebody will die. You see them always traveling. They say, no, me, I really love homo. I can't stay without going home. He say, lie. Some of them are going to renew some voodoo, some covenants. What kind of life is that? What kind of life is that? Yeah. Marine spirits, they will say every six months you have to come and sacrifice something at this river here. You have to come and bait in this river. So even if you travel far, 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 far to another country, 
You have to make sure you have money oh, to fly and come and say, <laughs> my God. There's some of you that are suffering from that. Your parents went to make covenant with the devil and they are thinking it's the devil that gave them you. Meanwhile, the devil did not give them any child though. But your mother has to keep going to do something. When your mother is about to die, she will say, okay, my child, make sure you go to this river every time or make sure you go home every time and do this thing. Please, this is what I've been doing since you were born. Do it. If not, my dear, what is that? What is that? What is that? And the child will say, God forbid, I'm not doing that. I'm a child of God. I can never do that because they've made a covenant with the devil. Now this child is suffering attack upon attack because of sins of the father, because of sins of the mother. The child is suffering. The child is suffering because the mother went to make a stupid covenant with the devil. Do you know how many people have delivered that their parents did some things? That the children refused to keep to. And now the children were suffering. The demons were coming to torment the child. So many deliverance. So many. The devil doesn't give you stuff and tell you to go. You have to keep coming back to him. Yeah. Why would you go and enjoy anything? No. Does the devil even have anything to give you? Nothing. What he has, what he's showing you, is it, what's it called? Is it an illusion or whatever? It's not really real. It's not real. It's not real. It's not real. It is not real. There was one day, a few months after I started preaching online, I had a dream. God took me somewhere. And there was no house in that area. It was a plain field. And suddenly I saw like a, a little building that is so beautiful from the outside. It had different colors. I saw blue colors. I saw it was so cute. And it was the only thing in that area that people like as they are passing by it, they have to stop because it was so cute. It was so beautiful from the outside. I stood. God was there with me. I was standing and I was watching. I was just supposed to watch. People will be passing by. They will enter the building and they will be taking pictures. I saw people with their phone taking pictures. I was standing from the outside, but I could see what was happening in the inside. And there was a girl. The girl had on glasses. God showed me a girl using one of my followers at that time. And she would shout, leave, oh, come out of that place, oh. Don't be fooled by this building. It's not that beautiful. It is going to turn into water and swallow everybody, like the ground that they are stepping on. She said, this ground you are stepping on in this building is not really a ground. It's not a real ground. It's a sea. It will swallow you. It's been changing every two minutes. Please, please come out of there. Please, I don't want you to die. And they will be like, what are you talking about? How can this ground change to see this beautiful thing we're seeing? My friend, get out. Are you crazy? What are you talking about? Lo and behold, two minutes later, the ground will just change to one big sea and everybody standing on it. It will swallow it, swallow all of them. And the ground will cover again in two minutes and do like nothing happened. It will look beautiful again. She will cry again. The next set of people will come. She said, the last people that were here, they died. Oh, please come out. Oh, please come out. This girl was crying. Crying her heart out. You will die. Oh, this is not what it is. Oh, this is not it. This thing is a trap. What you're standing on is not a ground. Oh, come on, please. I don't, I don't want you to die. I saw the other people dying. They will say no. Some of them, only a few people listen to her. Why me? I was watching. I was just seeing people die. I was crying. But I couldn't do anything because I was just meant to watch. I even saw one parent that had a little child in their hand. The child removed their hand from the parent and ran out of that place. And right after the child ran, the ground changed to a big sea and swallowed everybody. So it looked flashy from the outside. It looked flashy. But it was not really what it was. It was hell. It killed a lot of people. I was there for five hours. I don't know how I know the time, but I always know that it was five hours. I was crying. I said, Lord, why am I watching this? I don't want to keep watching it. People are just dying. <laughs> 
When I woke up, I was shaken by that dream. I cried. I cried. I cried. And I called Bishop. I told him the dream. I said, I saw a dream. People were just dying. <laughs> it was a beautiful building. People entered it and this girl kept telling them to come out, but they didn't listen. And they were just dying and dying. <laughs> and I was just there watching and watching. They were just dying. And Bishop was like, what I saw, that's the world. Yeah. People come into this world, getting carried away by the things of this world, the flashiness of this world. That's what Jesus was showing. And that's what the devil was showing the devil. He took him to the high exceeding mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them. God, Jesus did not fall for that glory because <laughs> he knew that that was a trap. What kind of glory is that? That would take him to hell. He said, that's the world. And that girl, you see, that's an evangelist. That's the people that always preach to people. Repent, 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 repent. Jesus is coming soon. Repent. This thing you are seeing, sin lives to death. You will go to hell if you keep living in this world, doing the things of the world, following all these flashy things and doing all. Repent, repent. People are always telling them repent, but they will say, are you crazy? Please, it's a lie. Which Jesus is not coming soon. There is no heaven. There is no hell. And boom, they die. See, so that's the world. People are carried away with the things of this world, the flashiness of these things in the world. But these things don't last. Boom. They die. Some of them die loving those things of the world and they go to hell. But these preachers are there crying their heart out, always coming on Facebook, preaching to people. Repent, 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 repent. They curse us. They insult us. You are broke. That's why you're doing this work of God. You are this. You are that. Are you stupid? What are you saying? What do you understand? Go and enjoy your life, my friend. You are... Yeah. God says that this is what he's sending you to do. Go out there and warn them. Tell them that all that glitters is not gold. Tell them to repent. Otherwise they will die. They will die. Just like those people. That were swallowed by that water. Because they refused to listen. So you are that evangelist. That one that was crying. That's you. That's who you are supposed to be. Go out there crying every day. Telling people to repent. I saw it. I can never forget that dream. It felt so real. See, God shows me a lot of stuff. And sometimes when I see these dreams, I wake up. Oh my God, nobody can stop me from doing the work of God. Hey, 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 hey. There are some of you that before you were not willing to love God, the moment you had one of those rapture dreams or one of those dreams, <laughs> the way you love God now, eh? nobody can bring you back to your old self <laughs> because you know what you saw when you close your eyes. Huh? The encounter you had was too real. There's nobody that can take you away from it. Even if everybody said they will serve God, you, you know what you saw in your dream. Nobody can convince you otherwise. I know what I have seen. Heaven is real. Hell is real. I will keep preaching. I will keep doing what God told me to do. I will keep living for God. I will not be carried away with all these things that the devil is showing me to flash, to flash me, to make me feel like, yeah, this is it. No, no, no. Because I know that those things are all vanity. Those things will fade away. That's right. Even your car, for instance, you bought your car. Two years ago, it was the best car in the world. It was brand new. It was the newest model, everything. But two years from now, today now, that car is no longer the newest car. That car, in fact, is having some problems already. That car has some things that you don't like it again. There's a newer one. In fact, there are two newer ones that have come out. Every year they are releasing a newer one. The car that then seemed like your God. Now the car has no value. In fact, the value is not... In fact, you don't even like it again. Now, maybe they're even recalling the car. They are saying, oh, there's something problem that they can't fix. They're recalling it. But two years ago, it seemed like that car was everything to you. <laughs> Just two years now. 
and the car has no value to you no more. That's how this world will fade and everything in it will fade. That's right. Look at your own self, your body. When you were young, you were so fine, so skinny, so shapey. You didn't have, um, you didn't have, um, uh, what's it called? Um, you didn't have, uh, what's it called? Saggy things in your body. Your face was good. You didn't have, um, stretch mark. You didn't have none of that. Your body was good, firm and everything. But now look at you, look at you, look at you, look at you. Just 10 years later or five years later or 20 years later. You are looking so old already. You got wrinkles. You look at your face. You got wrinkles. You have your, 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 this thing, the bag underneath your eye is beginning to, um, shag. You have gray hair coming from your, your head. Look at you. You too, you are fading. Yeah. <laughs> You're not looking like the way you looked two years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago, when you thought that, oh no, I am the hottest babe in this planet. I am the, look at you. You don't even have that shape anymore. <laughs> hey, hey, that's the same way that this world will fade away. That kingdom that he was showing Jesus and the glory of them, it will fade away. Even money, when the devil tempts you with money and gives you so much money, right? Sometimes you don't even know what you use the money for. It's gone. It's finished. And you're still broke. You still need more. Yeah. At that time, you're like, man, do you know what I can use it for? Sometimes, eh, the moment you even get that money, one big problem will just come and take it. All the things that you plan to use it for, you could not even use them for that. It's like... It's like one big devourer. The devil gave you to you and the devil will send the devourer to come and take it. This devil is so wicked. You didn't use it for what you planned. And now you are even broker than before. Hey. Most of these people that go to the devil for money. You see their life, how wasteful they are. They want to be doing parties every day. They want to drink. They want to carry girls. They want to buy things and just waste. Like, they are kind of wasteful. You don't see them sowing seed in people's lives. You don't see them. In fact, that's evil money anyway. If they give you money, it takes your luck. Yeah. They are serving as agents now for the enemy. Have you not seen some people that the more they give you money, the broker you become? Eh? <laughs> you don't know. There are some rich people, your rich uncles, aunties, them that you rather not take money from them because every time you collect money from them, you find yourself broke, 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 broke. It's evil money. They use it to even exchange your destiny. You collect money from them to start business. You can't start the business. Instead, you are in more debt. You are wondering, ah, ah, did I not just have all this money two weeks ago? What happened? You don't even understand how this money vanished. Because it's not real money. It's fake. Yeah. Like I said, it's an illusion. So back to that movie. The guy went and said, oh, my mother is hunting me. How do I have so much money and I can't even enjoy it? I have a big house. I can't even sleep well in the house because my mother's spirit keeps telling me. They said, okay, we can help you, but you have to do something. He said, what? He said, well, for your mother's spirit to stop hunting you. Some of you may have watched this movie. I'm not making it up <laughs> to tell you how wicked the devil is. <laughs> he said, for your mother's spirit to stop hunting you. This is what you need to do. You have to eat your own poop. Hey! Daily. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hey! My God. You have to poop, put it in a plate, and you eat it. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. So the devil sent a familiar spirit to be tormenting him like it's his mother. Just so he can come back only to come and eat his own poop. So you say you want all these riches, all this money, all these things. Now you have to eat your own poop. You can't even eat good food no more. Eh? I beg, how many of you watched this movie? How many of you watched it? Let it not be like I'm making it up. Oh. Hey, when I saw it, I was laughing. I said, that's the devil for you right there. <laughs> that's the devil. That's how he works. He's wicked. 
When God blesses you, it make it you rich. And he added no sorrow. See, when God blesses you, you will enjoy this blessing. Hey, it will not add sorrow to it. Oh, but the devil, ha, yeah, 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 sorrow every day. The guy said, what? How can you even tell me to do something like that? What kind of thing is that? How can I eat my own poop? God forbid, I will never eat my poop. What kind of thing is this? He got angry and left. They say that's the only way that your mother's spirit will stop hunting you. I'm sure the devil is sitting somewhere laughing at him. <laughs> Foolish guy. <laughs> you thought I would help you? You think I like you like that? I will never help you. I hate you. <laughs> you will eat your poop. The guy went, they, that, they made the spirit torment him more and more and more. He had to run back to them. He said, okay, I will do it. This rich man had a big house, a lot of cars, throw parties all the time, but cannot eat regular food. He has to eat poop daily. <laughs> he would take a plate, go to the, the, the toilet and squat and poop in the plate. And he will go to the dining table and start to eat his own poop. Hey! Doing his face like mm, eating shit. Hey, my God. So basically, rich man that is smelling of shit. Rich man. Somebody said that is why the devil is so dirty. God bless you. Of course, the devil is dirty. He likes to do dirty, disgusting things. So you see him showing Jesus the kingdom of the world and the glory of them. What glory? What glory? Shit glory? Sadness? Hey! The guy was eating shit. For some days, the mother spirit didn't come. He would eat shit. He was thinking like he, he, he was sad. Because he never thought in his life that he would get to the point where he would have to eat his own poop. Even with all the money that he has. This is a lesson for you guys to know that the devil cannot offer you anything good. So what that man is offering you, that temptation that is coming your way now that you're fasting, that it seems like they're about to give you money or they're about to give you something that you need. Stop it. Don't take it. It's not what it seems. It's a trap. It's a trap. Do you know that after some time, maybe a few days or a few weeks, the mother spirit started to haunt him again. Plus he was eating shit. Hi, God. So even with eating the poop, that ghost did not stop haunting him. So now he's haunted. He can't stay in his house. He's eating poop and it's not working. He said, you lied to me. You deceived me. You made me kill my only, my, the only person I have in my life. Now you told me she will stop hunting me. You made me eat my poop. Now she's still hunting me. He is a liar. The devil is a deceiver. He's the father of all lies. How do you expect to be happy with the devil? Someone that hates you so much that wants you in hell with him. He has to lure you with things that he thinks you will like. And most people like all these material stuff. Most people like money a lot. Most, most of you, oh my God, you love money so much, you do anything for money. Some of you, the sickness you have is because you went to sleep with a guy that you did not know he had HIV or did not know he was passing disease to people and he gave you a bunch of money. The money till today, you don't even know what you used it for. You always probably use protection and he told you, no, I don't want to use protection. And because you were desperate, you did it. But now look at you. You have this sickness that you can't even, like, doctors cannot even help you. Yeah. You're suffering. Because you succumb to something, to some temptation. And you wish you never did that. Some of you, it's just one time you did it in your life. Your first time doing it. And you did not know it would come with so much of this pain. You wish you hadn't done it. Yeah. There are some of you. I'm just saying. There are some things you did. All you did was say, well, let me just do it just this one time. And this one time wrecked your life. 
Just one time. Let me just try it. Let me just do it. Nobody will know. It will be quick. Let me just do it. And you are suffering from it. Because you bowed to the devil that one time. Jesus was not going to fall for that. Jesus was not going to fall for that. Jesus was not going to fall for that. Jesus knew these things. He knew that it was a trap. He knew the devil has nothing good to offer. What is he going to use all that kingdom from, for anyway? Do you know where he's coming from? He came from heaven. Heaven has the best of everything. Yeah. So why will he fall for that? Some of you, you know that God gives good gifts. But you are still letting the devil tempt you with some fake, fake nonsense gifts that don't last, that cause trouble. And you still fall for those temptations. With, with gifts that will add sorrow to your life. And again, the devil taketh him up into a high exceeding mountain and showed him all the kingdom of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. I will give you all these things. I will make you rich. Oh, you will have all these kingdoms. You know, they've been given to me. You can have it all. All I need is for you to worship me. Be my servant. Be my slave. Then saith Jesus unto him. Get thee here Satan. Get out of here you devil. For it is written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. And him only shall thou serve. Get out of here you devil. Get out of my mind. Stop talking to me. It is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. I will never bow to any other God. It doesn't matter what you give me, what you show me. It will not work. I will serve God and God only. Even if it means me going broke. Even if it means me going hungry, dying of hunger. I will not bow to you, devil. Let me die of hunger. When I go to heaven, they will give me enough food in heaven. I will not, because I'm so hungry, take food from you and go and suffer in hell. No, I will rather die hungry. I will rather die broke than take any gift from you because your gifts are not really gifts, are they? No, they will torment me. They will haunt me. They will make me miserable. I don't want it. Take it away from here. Let them kick me out of my house if they have to, no problem. But I will never bow to you. That's right. He said, get out. I will do this fast. Yes. It's okay. God will come through for me. Even if God doesn't come through for me. Me, I will not bow. It's like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When Nebuchadnezzar had that um, that statue. And he said they should bow to it. Hey, They say, no, we will not bow. They say, we will throw you into the furnace. He said, no problem. You can throw us into that place. God will save us. But see, 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 see. Even if God doesn't save us, eh, we still will not bow. Hey, my God. How many people have such faith? How many people love God so much like this lately? People are so quick to bow. The moment small temptation come, hey, let us do it though. We don't know how we will survive though. We don't know if there's any way out though. Let's just take it after all. This woman of God, yeah, she's already blessed. She doesn't care about us. It's not even about me, sweetie. It's not about me. It's God watching you. God is watching. God is watching every move you make. God sees. God knows. And guess what? If you read that story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God saved them. Yeah. He came through for them. They had already thrown them into the fire. Some of you, maybe you really have to lose something, that house or the car. You have been thrown into the fire, but in that fire, God came and saved them inside the fire. So sometimes maybe you really have to be in the fire. <laughs> Stop running away from the fire. Let them throw you in there. 
So you will see the power of God while you are in it. <laughs> hey! They saw a fourth person in there. Yeah, they came out on scratch, on no bun, on no smell of smoke in their bodies. It didn't even seem like they were thrown into fire because they refused to bow to the devil. So you that is doing this fast, don't bow to any temptation. Don't bow to that devil. Because that's how the devil wants you to break this thing. So that the witch will continue to torment you. Think of why you are doing this. Why are you doing this? Why did you decide to join this fast? Why? Always think of your why. Why do you love God so much? Why do you want to live for God? Why? Think of your why. That's right. Don't get carried away by these things that the devil flashes your way. Things showing you, don't you want that? Don't you want this? Don't, those things are not real. They're not. I just told you movie. This movie, they gave him money. He couldn't enjoy the money. Now he's eating poop and all of that. Things that will fade away. Then Jesus said unto him, Get thee and Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. That's right. Take away all your things. I don't need them. Go. I will only worship God. I may not look rich to you right now, but trust me, I'm very rich. Uh huh. I may not have the nicest car, the fanciest house. Jesus was not even concerned about properties or all of that stuff. He came on a mission. He focused on his mission. You will see him as that. Look at this man. He only has one sandals. Look at him. Like me. Some of you see me. I wear the same sandals all the time. My girls have been begging me. Please, woman of God, let us buy you this one. Let us do this. Some of you guys buy me sandals. I have a bunch of sandals that some of you bought me. But I don't wear I still wear that same black one that I like. And you will see me and say, ah, look at this woman. Or you see me with one dress. Ah, look at this woman. My dress is even more expensive than her. No problem. But I am so rich. You don't know. I am very rich. I have the biggest mansion that Jesus is preparing for me in heaven. I have so much, so much in heaven. My treasures are laid up in heaven. I can't wait to go enjoy it there. Where moths rust and thieves cannot break in. You see, I read that scripture on my video, I think, earlier. I'm looking forward to that one. Not this one that they don't last. You can get a house before you know one day you lose the house. Before you know flood will destroy the house. Yeah. You can't really say you are rich here, are you? No, you are not. Because it's not even permanent, man. You can lose it at any time. So Jesus, his riches is not measured by what you see. His riches are all in heaven. His kingdom is in heaven. He knew he was not going to last long in this town anyway. He only stayed three years doing his ministry. So why will he want to take all those nonsense kingdom that he's going to leave behind? He doesn't need them. He was always on the move. See, if you have a big mansion in like Houston and you're always going to be on the move, are you going to carry your mansion to every state you travel to? Eh? You go to Dallas, would you carry your house with you? No. Would you carry your car to Nigeria? No. You're going to play, go in a plane now. Maybe you will ship it. Sometimes the plane, it might take two months before it arrives. That thing you're so crazy about, the house, the car, those things, are you going to carry them everywhere with you? Even the house, when you have the house, say a five-bedroom house, a big house, how many rooms in one night would you sleep in? One room at a time, sweetie. You can't sleep on this bed and say, oh, I've enjoyed this bed for one minute. Let me go and enjoy the bed in the other room. <laughs> okay, this bed. You sleep, you time yourself. 30 minutes later, you go to the third room. Okay, let me enjoy the bed in this third room today. <laughs> you go to the fourth room. Let me enjoy the bed in this fourth room. Are you going to be running around sleeping in different rooms? No, no. You may not even enter some of the rooms. Some people live in a house. They've not even opened the door of some of the rooms in their house. They are just used to the room they sleep in. The bathroom they use downstairs and the living room. That's it. They don't even know if somebody else is living in one of the rooms. Some people have so many cars. But they always drive one car. 
They have one that they're always driving that is easy for them to just enter and go. The big boats, they probably kept them in the garage for weeks, months. They haven't driven them. You have eight, ten cars. You only drive one all the time. The other eight, they're just there depreciating. <laughs> Rust is entering them. Engine is becoming something else. Can't you see? Can't you see? You can only use one at a time. Some people have all of these things, riches, wealth, but they still don't have peace. They're not even happy. They have all these things, but it's like something is missing. You know, like they'll say, I have all this money, but why am I not happy? Because something is missing. They don't have Jesus. They don't have Jesus. They have a they thought money will make them happy. They got money, but they're not still happy. They're not feeling at peace. They thought getting married will complete them. They are married now, but they still feel like something is missing. Oh, they're thinking maybe it's children. They start having children. They still feel like something is missing. Oh, they're thinking maybe it's a job. They get a job. They still feel like something is missing. I don't feel like I'm complete because they don't have Jesus. Only Jesus completes us. Ye are complete in him. He's the head of all principality and power. Without Jesus, you are not complete. It doesn't matter what the devil has shown you, the flashiness, all those things you may think you have acquired. You may have a closet full of designer purses. Who cares, sweetie? Who cares? Who the purse don't help? Has the purse saved anybody's life? Is the purse going to give eternal life? Hey, did the purse come and die for you? <laughs> did the purse shed his blood for you? Huh? <laughs> See, let me tell you, these designer things, eh? it's only for somebody else that knows designer, that knows name brand, that will know what you're carrying. There are people that don't know name brand. So as far as they are concerned, that thing you're holding is a regular purse. Uh -huh. They don't know that you spent thousands to get it because they don't even know what that designer is. You only go around people that probably have designer that will know, oh my God, this is Louis Vuitton, this is Gucci, this is that. But there are so many people that they don't know what Gucci is. They don't know anything. So you, you might even spend $50,000 buying one watch. You enter a place, people that don't know what that designer is, they don't even know the value of what's on your hand. They don't even care. They don't care. In fact, if you do too much, they will cut your hand off and steal that watch and go sell it. They will chop off your head. Go and sell that watch. You think people really care? They don't care. Oh, I want all this. I want people to respect me. Ah, okay. You'll be surprised. People don't even care about you. They don't send you. <laughs> yeah, so what? You have all this soul. Who has this one help? Because you have this, does that mean I shouldn't live my life again? I beg, let us hear what you're... In fact, they will start to hate you, Seth. He said, it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. He said, get thee and get out of here. I'm tired of you tempting me. Get out! And guess what happened in verse 11 of Matthew chapter 4? He said, then the devil leaveth him. And behold, angels came and ministered unto him because God was watching and God knew that his son will pass this test. <laughs> angels were behind, like they, they, were, they were standing by the corner just waiting because they were sure that Jesus would not, would not fail this test. So every time you are being tempted, every time the devil comes to you whispering in your ears, telling you to do something that goes against what God wants you to do, angels are waiting to minister unto you. God is watching and believing that you would not fall for that temptation. God has angels. That rent that you think that they will kick you out. God has an angel waiting to bless you with the money. God is just waiting to see if you will pass the test and resist that devil so he can flee from you. Jesus had to kick the devil out, get out, 
Get the ends. Get, get out of here. I don't need this. I don't need this. I'm not bowing to you. I'd rather die than bow to you. I'd rather be kicked out of this place. Then let them cut my phone. No problem. Let everybody know my phone is cut. Let them know so. The devil will say, if they disconnect your phone, people will know you are broke. People will know that you don't have money. If of all things, phone is not something that you should allow people to, to know. Phone is not something that they should disconnect because people will know how broke you are. So, let them cut the phone, so. Let them know how broke I am, so. Who cares? I don't care what people think about me. All I care is what Jesus thinks about me. Let them say what they have to say. I am not living to please no man but God. Some of you have been through this. Your phone will be disconnected. You know when they call you and you'll say, we are sorry, the number you're calling is temporarily disconnected or whatever. They will say, hey, so this woman is broke. So let them say, at least I'm not selling my soul to the devil. I still have my integrity. I still love God. Let them say, no problem. What is God saying? That's all that matters right now. Stop falling for the devil. He will make you feel like, oh, what would they think about you? Eh? What would they think about you? They will say, who cares? You think Jesus cared about what people thought about him? All he wanted to do was please his father. Who cares? There are some people that said so many things about me. Now they are the ones messaging me to pray for them. Oh, when I first started, there were so many people that called me names, that said many things about me. Do you know they are in my inbox now asking for prayer, woman, calling me woman of God? <laughs> ay, 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 ay. In the beginning, these people said so many things about me. They said I was frustrated, I was broke, I needed money, that this is not real, I am this. But now they are in my inbox asking, begging me for deliverance, begging me for prayers. So who cares what they think? I don't live to please man. I live to please God. I want to obey his commandments. Not man-made rules, not man-made commandments or man-made policies or whatever. I want to obey God's commandment. Jesus kept quoting the scriptures. He said we should worship God only and serve him only. That's one of the commandments. We cannot bow to any other God. Do you know that? Some of you, you will bow and you will say, don't worry, I'll repent when I'm done. There's some people like that. Let's just do it and repent. Nobody will know. <laughs> Who will know now? Let's just do it. Woman of God will know. Nobody will know that I did it. Please, after all, all these people, they don't even care about me anyway. Please. No, no, no. No, let's just do it. But you start living, feeling guilty. The devil will use it to accuse you. The devil will be condemning you every day. Look at you. Look at what you did. Look at what you did. Yeah. There's some of you that the devil is always trying to condemn you for something he made you do. You want to pray. That thing will flash to your face. You are here praying. You forgot what you did yesterday. Eh? You are here praying. Do you forgot how you slept with that woman's husband? You are here speaking in tongues. Come on and stop deceiving yourself. He will keep using it to flash. He will be haunting you with it. Angels came and ministered unto him. ERV says, so the devil left because Jesus told him to get out. Then angels came to Jesus and helped him. NLT said, that then the devil went away and angels came and took care of Jesus. Ay, 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 ay. So whenever we we resist the devil and all his temptation. Just like me. I said, I'm not eating. I'm going to sleep. I woke up and God says, are you still hungry? I said, no. Do you feel strong? I say, yes. 
Because angels ministered unto me when I was sleeping. So I passed the test. And the devil is so mad. Why would God tell me to preach this message? As I came on the prayer line, he said, this is the message you preach. Now. A lot of you angels are waiting on the corner. To minister unto you. To take care of you. To help you. But first you need to pass the test first. You need to kick the devil out of your mind. You need to tell him, you know what? All these things you're saying is not going to work. I'm not breaking this. I will stick to this fast. I will not die. And you witch, you will still die. That witch must die. These are all powers. You know this witch is, they use powers. Powers to manipulate people. Witches are very manipulative. Or oh, you think they will come to you and use knives to cut you and kill you? No. They will just send a demon to manipulate you. To make you weak. To make you sleepy. To make you frustrated. To make you feel you can't continue. That's the powers. They use powers on people. To manipulate people. But these powers will not work for you. Because now you know that is the devil. So you will resist him. You will kick him out. You say, you know what? Get out. If you have to sleep, you sleep. By the time you wake up, angels will minister to you. And God will be giving you a round of applause. It will be clapping for you that you did it. At the end of it, there is a reward for you. At the end, even you, you will feel good about yourself that you did this. Because the witch must die. The witch can try all her tricks that she knows. She can try using all the powers that the devil gave her. Hey, 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 do you know you have the power of the Holy Ghost? Oh, yes. And that power is greater than any power that is out there in the world. So you cannot be defeated by that witchcraft power. Because the power that is in you is greater than the witchcraft power. Ye have overcome them, little children. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You have overcome them. Meaning you can just say, you know what? Out, you devil. Stop speaking to me. Get out. Hey, my God. Some of you don't know the power that you have. Stop acting so weak. You've been given power. Use it. Don't let the witch keep using her own power to manipulate you. Remember I keep saying... And uh, we too, we are many because they always say we are many. We are coming for you. We are coming to break down your ministry. We are many. Shut up. Shut your mouth, you witch. We are many too. And I'm coming for you. And you know, when I come for you, you confess and you die. But I'm still here. Ha! Ha! Who do you want to intimidate me? Ha! You will die. That's right. They want to use their, their fake power, their powerless power to intimidate you that carries a stronger power. Hey, Jesus, wake up from your sleep. Recognize who you are in Christ. You are not supposed to be weak. Hey, my God, who's ready to pray? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Who is ready to pray? That witch must die. <laughs> I am so charged up right now. I say you need to recognize who you are in Christ. God has given you so much power. Pray. I'm going to unmute it. Begin to pray. We're going to pray for a few minutes before we go. Pray. Use that power that has been given to you. Begin to command that witch to die. That witch must die. Holy Ghost fire on that witch. The devil is a bastard. I will not fall for that temptation. I will not do that thing. I will not bow to you. I will not break this fast. I will continue. I will be empowered. I will be strong to do this. I I am not falling for your trick, you devil. Hey, Rekele bo si bara baba, Riantoro bo sente, Are Santa ya baba, Rendele bo shanta, He kason toro bo sente, Ha ya 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 ya, Rekata ya ya ya, Rekata ya ya ya, Onda ya baba baba, Onda ya baba baba. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
Hey, I know your tricks, you devil. Hey, you want me to bow to you? I will not bow to you. You want me to eat? I will not eat. Oh, you want me to tempt God? To test God's power? I will not do that. Hey, 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 <laughs> Jesus. You witch. It doesn't matter what you do. I will keep praying for you to die in the name of Jesus. You want to make me weak? Ha! Liar. It will not work. <laughs> you want me to forget why I'm doing this fast? I will not forget. <laughs> God has given me a sound mind. <laughs> I have a sound mind. I will not forget why I am doing this. Hey! You have lost all you this week. Try everything you know. It is not working for me. It is not working for me. <laughs> yes, Lord. That witch must die. Holy Ghost fire on that witch. Holy Ghost fire on all of them. All of them in that meeting. Die by fire in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. They thought that you were going to fall for that temptation. Eh? Hey, <laughs> they lied. Hey, 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 hey. Yes, Lord. 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 I say you are not weak. Oh. <laughs> you are not going to be led by your flesh anymore. That thing that the devil is offering you, you don't want it. Say, I don't want your gift, devil. Keep it. I don't need it. Ha! <laughs> I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. Keep it. I don't want your money. Keep it. Ha! Ha! You wish you would die. Telebos, ya baba. Rekete lelelebo. Randa ya bo si para baba. Ale koto lobo siete. I say that which must die. That which must die by fire, by fire, in the name of Jesus. Hey, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I will continue this fast. I will do this fast. Nobody can stop me. No temptation of the devil can stop me. I will keep fasting and praying. <laughs> Do you see that some of you, God is telling me to ask you that some of you suddenly you have received strength from nowhere. It's like something just came over you. Tell me if this is you. He says, suddenly it's like strength just came over you. You that was looking like you were tired, you were weak. This message just gave you strength. Ha! Hey, you feel like you have just eaten. You feel like somebody just fed you because guess what? Angels just ministered unto you. Yes, 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 yes. You that was looking so weak, like you can't continue praying. Please, when are we going to end the fast? Suddenly, something came over you. Now you are strengthened. Now you want to pray. Now, the next prayer point is back to sender. Everything they have sent your way. Everything they have done to you. Back to sender. Back to sender. Back to sender. Back to that witch. Uh, the same way it went back to Massa. That madness. Back Back to the witch. Back to sender. Back to sender. Back to sender. Back to sender. Hey, back to sender. Hey, Jesus. Hey, 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 h
Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Receive strength. Ha, ha, ha. Receive strength in the name of Jesus. You will fight till you finish. Ha, ha. You will fight till you win. Ha, ha, ha. That's right. Ha, ha, ha. Repon the level. Shete le le bo si anda. Rapa la kato robo si ke le gade se te le le le. Rondo robo si barababa. Rian toro sonte. Wake up from that bed. Pray. That witch that is sitting on your destiny. Whatever they have done to you. Back to them. Back to sender. Enough is enough. They will die by fire in the name of Jesus. The devil made you feel like you can't continue. He made you feel like you will die if you continue. He made you feel like there is no more strength in your body. He made you feel like you have to eat. Because if you don't eat, you will die. You are still here. You are not dead. You shall not die. Jesus, thank you. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do Holy Ghost fire 12 times. And you will turn around like we did last time. I got some testimonies from that. You will turn around as you say, as I say, Holy Ghost, you shout fire. We'll do it 12 times. Something happens when we do that. Do you know? <laughs> Just get up wherever you are. When I say Holy Ghost, you shout fire. You turn around one. We'll do it 12 times. Holy Ghost, fire. Holy Ghost, fire. Holy Ghost, fire. Fire, Holy Ghost, 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 fire. Now everybody shout glory, 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 make some noise, shout glory. Don't worry, we're sleeping, it doesn't matter, just shout glory. Something has happened. Begin to thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Just pray. Thank you, Jesus. All I'm hearing is say thank you, Jesus. That's all I'm hearing in my spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. Ha. Huh? I know that you are fighting for me. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 My God. Oh, my God. How is everybody feeling now? Let us know how you're feeling. Don't you feel like you just received strength? Like supernatural strength just came over you, right? <laughs> I say it's good to serve the Lord, man. It's like you just have this strength that you did not have before. It's like you just woke up. <laughs> Something just woke up in you. I'm telling you, you will not break that fast till you finish. After hearing this message, <laughs> the devil is a bastard. He probably did not want me to preach this message. He probably did not want me to say this thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. God bless all of you. I'm going to let you go. We've spent two hours today. My God. <laughs> Continue praying in your house. So read your Bible. This strength that you just received, this fire, this fire that you have inside of you that is burning inside of you. You need to read the scriptures, pray, meditate. You know, just believe that God will fight for you. God gave me this message for you because he knows some people are getting weak already. Some people were thinking of breaking. Some people were thinking of not doing it anymore. But after this message, ha, never. You will fight till you finish. <laughs> God bless all of you. I love you guys. I will see you at six. I'm probably going to come on live in a few. Let me go take a shower and come pray for some people because I've been sleeping. So I don't feel sleepy, but you can sleep. Don't wait for me. Go and sleep. Some of you need to sleep so that you will not be too tired. I love you guys. Bye-bye.